I have four rabbits in total. I have two bonded pairs. I have Billy who is eight and a half and Coco who is 11 this month. And they are my first bonded pair, so they're my oldest bunnies. I have Lotus who is around about, probably about five now and Biel who is around about seven now. And they are my second pair of bonded bunnies. So they're still almost can sort of considered to be seniors. And then I have my two guinea pigs that I have, and I have Buttercup, who is an elder piggy, she is six, and Splinter, who is about three now. And Splinter has been bonded with Buttercup since she was a little baby, so I adopted them as a pair. The biggest part of your rabbit and guinea pigs diet should be fresh, good quality grass hay that is fed 24 hours a day in unlimited quantity. Um, piggies and rabbits should eat a ball of hay as big as themselves at least every day and it should be free fed 24 seven. And also fresh drinking water should be available at all times as well, obviously. They are the two most important things. Your rabbit and guinea pigs diet. My rabbits and piggies are pellet free diet. So I have a seed mix that I feed them that I make up myself and it contains oily seeds such as the pumpkin seeds and the sunflower seeds which give slow release energy. They have antioxidants and essential fatty acids in them and they also have some flowery seeds for quick release energy and aromatic seeds which is the tiny little ones there you can see. Uh, they're rich in essential oils for healthy effect on um, health issues, good for skin and coat and digestion. So they get this much, they get two of these per day and you can see them eating it there, they absolutely love it. And pellets aren't necessarily a healthy thing for your rabbits. I had to trouble with my rabbits with digestive issues from pellets, especially the older ones, they found it really hard. And I found since they've been on the pellet free mix, they've just had so much better digestion. Um, pellets were actually developed for industrial farming to create a cheap alternative for natural foods for rabbits. So they actually weren't created for as a healthy uh, addition to a rabbit's diet. They actually can cause teeth problems because they create an unnatural chewing motion in the pellets. They can also um, swell up and ferment in the gut and create problems with kidneys and things like that with lack of water in the system as the pellets swell up in the system. They can create bloating and they can also create a really full feeling. So don't eat as much of the good um, roughage like the hay and that sort of thing that they should have in their diet. So that was just my personal choice to switch from the pellets to this um, seed mix and I've just found it really really great for their overall health. I got the idea from Erin from Erin's Ark on YouTube and she has a fantastic website which lists in detail all the different ingredients, why they're good um, and why they're better than the pellets. So I will leave a link in the description for that if you want to have a look for yourself and see what it's all about um, and it's definitely worth having a look. So what you see here is the things that I would purchase from the supermarket regularly for the bunnies and the piggies. So we have got a mix here that I get them which is a four leaf salad mix and it's got lots of different sort of um, oak lettuces like red oak, green oak, it has rocket, uh, different little baby lettuces in there. So I do feed them that. I also buy them cos lettuce just on its own as well. These are really good if I'm having a busy day or I'm in a rush because they're all pre-washed and ready to eat so I can just give that to them. But they're these ones I have to wash before I use them. Um, I do give them occasionally, and this is only occasionally, apples just because it is quite sweet so I don't like to give them too much of that. But for a treat I use apples. I also feed both the guinea pigs and the rabbits, um, well we call them capsicum, I think they're known, also known as bell peppers, different colours of those. And then often we'll go towards the end of the week to get our groceries and they have these herbs that are discounted which is fantastic as you can see like it's 93% off which is a huge saving so we usually pick up some rosemary some continental parsley oregano and thyme and they love them it just adds a little bit of flavor and variety to their food and also herbs are often quite medicinal with their properties as well um, you have to be careful you don't want to give too much parsley because it is high in the calcium and that isn't great for the bunnies but for a little treat that's fine so this is what I tend to buy obviously in more um, quantity than this this is just a little sample like I usually get like six of these a week and I'll get a couple of these I'll get usually that many herbs probably four capsicum I only usually give them one apple between them a week, like that's shared out between them all. I'd only use one apple for that. But this just gives you a general idea of the type of things that I buy for them every week. Uh, and next I'll show you the things that I grow because all the other things, I do feed them more variety in this. Um, and all the other things are from homegrown from our garden. So I'll show you that next.
So I've got a selection of the different plants that I get out of the garden for the bunnies and piggies in front of me here. And I've just broken them up into their different piles so you can see what I can pick. So I've got some blackberries and blackberry leaves here. Uh, they're a treat, the blackberries, because they are sugary. They can have the blackberry leaves as well, but they're quite spiky, so they take a little while to pick without hurting yourself. Uh, so don't give them any of those. Uh, apple branches are great for the teeth. They help to wear down the teeth as they chew on the wood and um, keep their dental health good. We have some basil here from the garden, some rocket, some silver beet leaves, some baby celery. I really like the baby celery. It's nice and not too stringy. Some parsley, some um, dandelion leaves, some lavender, some lettuce and some milk thistle leaves as well. So they're everything that I can get from my garden at the moment. It changes with the seasons depending on what's growing at the time. Um, you'd want to be a little bit careful still giving them too much of the parsley of course and also the dandelion leaves because dandelion leaves are high in calcium as well. Um, but you know just adding a little bit in with their greens adds a bit of flavour and variety for them as well. Um, with all of my plants they're all organic i don't use any chemicals in my garden and i still always wash them before i give them to them as well the only treat i really feed apart from apple or berries is a little bit of banana every now and then that's really irregular because it's so sugary it can just ferment in the gut and it's not great for their delicate um, ba digestive balance so i don't give any store-bought treats this is the only other treat that i give my bunnies and piggies how I portion up the greens to feed the bunnies and the piggies. This is what they would get in a day, the amount of greens they would get in a day. And it's for the bonded pairs. So I have, you know, two bonded rabbit pairs. That plate is for them. So just keeping in mind, the plate is for two rabbits. So split it in half and that's one rabbit serving each. So the back ones are for Beale and Lotus and also for Billy and Coco, my two bonded rabbit pairs. And the front one is for Buttercup and Splinter, my bonded piggy girls and th so this is the amount of greens they would get in a day and you can see it's just got a variety of all the different things that I've mentioned previously in the video in here and um, I try and give them a good variety so there's not too much of any one thing uh, it, I avoid I don't have any as you can probably see vegetables in here like cabbage broccoli cauliflower bok choy anything like that I avoid those because I just find they can cause gas in rabbits and it can cause to a lot of digestive problems so I just choose to stick to the leafy greens which is what they would sort of eat naturally more naturally in the wild anyway and it mimics their natural diet I feed my greens to the bunnies and piggies in the evening, so they have them once a day. They have their grain-free mix for their breakfast in the morning. Obviously, they have their hay and water available all day, and then they have their greens of an evening. Um, when I did pellets, I just started this when I was still feeding pellets because I heard that pellets can react with the greens and it can cause digestive issues. Um, and I still like to do that even with my grain-free mix just so that their digestion isn't overloaded all at once. So... They get this of an evening and they're really good. They sort of have learnt um, to ration their greens, I think it's called. So they won't hog them all down at once if they're not hungry. They will save them and just gradually graze on them throughout the uh, night. And the same with the piggies, they do the same thing as well. And usually by the morning, all the greens have gone. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope it was interesting for you. And if you have anything to add, any questions or comments, just leave them down below. And I will now just leave you with some cute footage of the piggies and bunnies eating because, you know, I can never get enough footage of that. It's so cute. <laughs> and I'm sure you enjoy seeing it as well. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in my next one. Lots of love and hugs. Bye.